Although originally designed for DVD sources, Handbrake can also encode from the video files found on Blu-ray discs. Depending on how your Blu-ray source was authored, this may be as simple as just opening a video file. However, if you want to make sure that all the video for your title is in a single file and ready for opening in Handbrake, you'll need to do some pre-processing first. The first step will be to rip your Blu-ray disc to your hard drive. Next, you'll move on to analyzing the contents of that disc, which we'll use a program called BD Info to do. You can download the latest version of BD Info from AfterDawn.com software section. Type BD Info in the search box and click the search button. Select BD Info and then click the download link. When your download completes, go to the folder where you saved your download to. BD Info does not have an installer. Instead, simply unzip it to the folder of your choice. Then you can run it. Use the Browse button to locate and open the Blu-ray content ripped from your Blu-ray disc. You can select the BDMV folder from the disk, which is what contains all the actual data, or the folder above that, typically named after the name of the disk itself, BD Info will read through the disk's playlist files to identify titles and determine what video files are associated with each. For example, if I select a different title, you will see a different stream file listed here. Notice that the stream files are named .m2ts. That's because they are MPEG-2 transport streams similar to what are used for digital TV broadcasts. Most of the time, the title with the longest duration, which is what will be listed first in BD Info, is the title you're looking for. For episodic discs, like those from TV shows, there may be several main features, in which case some trial and error may be required to find the one you want. In rare cases, the title with the longest duration is an extra rather than the main title, which once again may require some trial and error to discover. In the case of my disc, I actually know that this is the main feature simply because I know the length is 25 minutes and 41 seconds rather than 37 minutes and 36 seconds. Highlight the title you wish to encode in Handbrake and make a note of the name of the playlist file. You'll need this in the next step when you actually extract streams based on that playlist. You can also look at the codec information which will tell you what type of streams are present in this case VC1 video, Dolby True HD audio, and regular Dolby Digital audio. But you can also look at those in the next step when we open up TS Muxer, so that's not essential here. In either case, close this window when you're finished. Next we'll move on to using TS Muxer to extract the streams from the M2TS file or files ripped from our Blu-ray disc. You can download the latest version of TS Muxer from AfterDawn.com software section. Enter TS Muxer in the search box and click the search button. Select Smart Labs TS Muxer. And click the download link. Once your download finishes, simply unzip the contents of the downloaded file 
and run tsmuxergui.exe. At this point you'll need to refer back to the name of the playlist file you identified in BD Info. Click the Add button and then navigate to the BDMB folder that's ripped to your hard drive. You need to look in the Playlist folder and once again look for the name of the playlist you identified with BD Info and double click on it. TS Muxer will then read the playlist and load the associated M2TS file or files. In some cases this will be a single file which contains your entire title. In other cases it could be multiple M2TS files which are joined together on playback and in this case we want to join them together in reality so that Handbrake can read them as one single file. Handbrake will give you details of the video, audio, and subtitle streams which are contained in the M2TS files you have loaded. Just as with BD Info, we can see that we have BC1 Video, AC3 or Dolby Digital Audio, and True HD Audio as well. We will be using TS Muxer to create a new transport stream from these same original streams so that we can load that file into Handbrake as a source. But before we do that, we can make some choices which will save us preparation time and disk space. The easiest way to do this is to look at the audio tracks and figure out if there are some that aren't supported by Handbrake or that we just don't want. If this is your first time encoding from a Blu-ray source in Handbrake, you may want to skip this part, simply because which selections you make are going to be largely a matter of personal preference, which you won't know until you've performed the operation at least once. Because I'm familiar with Handbrake, I already know that I can uncheck the True HD track as all it will actually give me in Handbrake is an AC3 core, which will be essentially equivalent to this AC3 track. Since True HD audio streams are very large, being lossless, I'm going to uncheck that. That will save me space in the final file, and it should require a little bit less time to create as well. Alternatively, if I didn't have this original AC3 track, and I wanted the AC3 out of the True HD stream, I could leave this checked and also check down convert true HD to AC3. This will still result in a smaller output file but will retain this AC3 information that I might need for my encode. However in this case that's not necessary. The other type of stream you may want to routinely remove would be DTS HD streams. Like Dolby True HD these tend to be large files and also like True HD, they have a DTS core which you can extract instead of keeping the entire stream. Once you've made any desired changes to the streams which will be output, make sure TS Muxing is selected and then browse for the location where you'd like to save your output file. Remember this TS file will be the actual source you will be using in Handbrake. Click the Browse button navigate to the location where you'd like to save your file and give it a name. Then click Save and that will save the name for you. Once you're ready to create your file go ahead and click the Start Muxing button. Depending on how long the file is and how many streams there are, this process could take a significant amount of time. However, for our purposes, we don't need to see the entire process, so I'll speed it up so we can move on to the next stage. Once TS Muxer has finished making your file, click OK, and then close TS Muxer. Now you're ready to open your newly created transport stream file in Handbrake. Click the source button and select video file. Navigate to the location on your computer where your new TS file is stored. Double click on your TS file and Handbrake will spend a few moments scanning it to find various pieces of information out. 
If automatic naming is enabled in Handbrake's options, but no default path has been set, you'll be prompted to do that now. You can find this settings on the Options dialog, which you access from the Tools menu. If you're not familiar with this option or haven't set it yet, you can find more information in the first guide in this series. Now let's look at the information that Handbrake gives you about your TS file. First of all, you'll notice there's only one title showing. Of course, we've only extracted one title, so that's to be expected. Next, you'll notice that there are no angles listed. That's a feature that's specific to DVDs and you won't see otherwise. There is also only one chapter listed. Even though Blu-ray discs certainly do have chapters, since Handbrake isn't reading the information that would show you what the chapters are or where they are, only one chapter is shown, which is equivalent to no chapters. Finally, you can see the duration of the title. Obviously, with no chapters, we don't have the option to encode only specific chapters. So that's the amount of video you're going to encode. Now that you have your source loaded, you're ready to set some general output options.